once again, in that study that Zana Lutfia did, which was uh, friendships between people with intellectual disability and people without disability, um, she came up with all of those same things. So the, the, the things that we find are important for having friends are, are the same for people uh, with disabilities and without disabilities who are in relationships as well. And I think I've added one point there which I alluded to right at the beginning is the safeguard. And this is what worries me the most. Um, now, Belonging Matters has been going uh, since 2000 and so we've worked steadily with some individuals with uh, intellectual disability and their families for many, many, many years. And one of the things that worries me is that some of these uh, individuals and families have created really good, full, meaningful lives. It's not that they've arrived, there's still more stuff to do, uh, but what particularly concerns me is what's going to happen when the family's no longer there. And, and it might, and it might be just through illness uh, that that the parents or family, whoever they are, can't provide the support that that they once did. Who's going to be there and who's going to safeguard that really good vision and the work that's been done? Or who's going to tell other people, uh, you know, what your son or daughter likes and loves? Um, and so this is the importance of friendships and friendships around your son and daughter's own age. Uh, now, in our work with circles of support, often uh, uh, parents will invite people there age into the circle of support. It's not that they uh, don't love and care about their son or daughter, but they're probably the f going to likely fall off the perch at about the same time that you are or the parent is. So this uh, work, intentional work around uh, people having people in their lives who can stand with them uh, you know, throughout life is really important. I will make one other point. Um, it's not that people with disabilities shouldn't have friends with disabilities. This is not the argument here, but people should have a range of diverse relationships. Uh, and in particular, for all of those things we said, but for this point, because if you have an intellectual disability and you only have friends with an intellectual disability, they're going to be struggling to stand up for themselves, let alone you or your son or daughter. Yeah. So it's not that we would count those friendships out. And some people have spent years and years together and we're not just going to rip friendships away from people. What we're talking about here is extending and building relationships in, so there's some diversity in relationship. There was a quote, I don't know how many of you saw this up on the wall, and this, this really struck me. Um, it was a quote by Janet Cleese. Uh, it was in an article or one of her books. I think we've got a couple of her books over there. And she tells a story about a man uh, who lived in his apartment in Canada, and there was a major electrical failure. Um, and um, so there was gridlock, right? So no one could get across town. He lived in a city centre, so support workers couldn't get to him. And I think he needed, uh, you know, assistance because of breathing apparatus that he used. And of course, there was an electrical failure. And um, she, the quote here says, no one within walking distance knew this young man well enough to think of lending a hand. The young man died that night for the lack of one person ready and able to put him first during that night of calamity. It's pretty powerful, isn't it? Yeah. So um, this is the important thing we've noticed over you know the past ten or fifteen years, uh, people moving into their own home, um, and uh, some people live with housemates. So there's some safeguards there with people, but some people have chosen with intellectual disability to live on their own. Um, and it always particularly, the first thing that um, we talk about is who are your neighbours and how can you get to know them and uh, can you invite them over for a cup of tea, like really get to know your neighbours, a bit like I did when I first moved into that neighbourhood because you want someone there quick when there's an emergency. Yeah.